This is a Palo Alto Networks video tutorial. My name is Joe Delio, and I'm a solutions engineer from the Palo Alto Networks community team. In today's video tutorial, I will be covering how to verify a DNS sinkhole. This video is designed to help verify if the DNS sinkhole function is working properly through a Palo Alto Networks firewall. For simplicity reasons, today I will be talking about verifying a client using external DNS server. Note, we're also assuming that you already have configured the DNS sinkhole feature and are wanting to make sure that this is working properly. If you'd like to read information about verifying both internal and external DNS servers with DNS sinkhole document, please refer to the transcripts and or the URL that you see on the page. I've also talked about how to configure DNS sinkhole in a previous video which you'll see the links here and or also in the transcripts. Also, for information on how to configure the DNS sinkhole in a document, please see the how to configure DNS sinkhole doc. All the links are available in the transcript and or you see the URL on the page here. So how does the DNS sinkhole feature work? I'll be talking with you today about a client using an external DNS server making a malicious DNS request. Here's an overview on how the DNS sinkhole protection works. Number one, the suspicious DNS request is seen by the firewall. Number two, the firewall blocks this request and sends a fake IP to answer the DNS request. Number three, the infected client gets your fake DNS answer and tries to reach its command and control server by making an HTTP or an HTTPS call to the sinkhole IP. Number four, if you're blocking the access to this fake IP, then that's how we're able to determine which client is infected. Please note, the Palo Alto Networks firewall must be in the path of the DNS request to a suspicious URL and also needs to be in the same path that the infected machine tries to access the DNS sinkhole IP to reach the command and control server. Now let's cover this with a little bit more detail. When the client system is accessing a known malicious URL using an external DNS server, the DNS query will go from the client through the Palo Alto Networks firewall and to the external DNS server. The firewall will hijack the DNS query and it will respond to the DNS server with the DNS sinkhole IP address that you have configured. In this example, we're using 1.1.1.1 as the fake DNS sinkhole IP. Inside the threat logs, you should be able to see the client IP address as a source when the suspicious DNS request is made. The next step would be looking for the client attempting to access a DNS sinkhole IP of 1.1.1.1. If you have configured your firewall properly, then you should be blocking all access, or at a minimum, service port 80 for HTTP or port 443 for HTTPS. Inside the traffic logs, you should then be seeing the traffic dropped to 1.1.1.1. Now let's take a look at this from a client perspective. We're logged into a client PC and we know that the domain gdcqia.com is a suspicious domain. If we perform an NS lookup for this domain, we can see that the response is actually 1.1.1.1 and not the real IP address. By manually performing this lookup with a suspicious URL, you can now see firsthand that the DNS sinkhole is working properly to provide the fake IP address. The second part of this is to pretend that you are an infected host and open up a web browser and try to visit the suspicious URL with the given IP address. Access to the site will not work as that is a fake IP, which is okay. This is very important for the traffic logs that we'll look at in just a minute. Now let's look inside of the GUI and let's look inside the threat logs by going to Monitor, going to Threat, and we're going to be looking for the client's IP address that we're using. Click on an IP address, and 172.16.77.209 is there. And the logs, you will see how the suspicious DNS request is showing up for the domain that we typed in. You'll see that the client IP address of 172.16.77.209 is actually listed as the attacker. Click on the magnifying glass to the left here to get a little bit more detail. Notice how the action is set to sinkhole 
and the application is DNS, and the source is 172.16.77.209, because the client itself is actually trying to go out to 8.8.8.8, .8 as you can see in the destination, to resolve this URL. We know that this is a client making this DNS request, but if you had an internal DNS server, that IP would show up instead of the client IP, as long as the DNS traffic went through this firewall. If that is the case, then we can skip to the next step to get more information. Also, please note that inside the details section, you can see how spyware is listed as the threat type and suspicious DNS query as the threat name. Now we can switch to the traffic logs by going to traffic on the left. And we need to look for destination IP address of 1.1.1.1. As we can see now when this pops up, that traffic is destined to 1.1.1.1 and we can see that it is being dropped if you configured your blocking rules correctly. This is how we can determine who the infected clients are. Since 1.1.1.1 is a fake IP address, only the machines making the suspicious DNS request are going to try to access these sites and then in turn be denied. You can search in your traffic logs or perform simple reporting on this rule to get a list of the machines that you need to restrict and or visit. That concludes this video tutorial about how to verify a DNS sinkhole. We hope that you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching.